we start with the Sefer Chofetz Chaim. The big topic is the same for the subjects uh, for the victim's benefit. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it's a new topic. See, I missed it for no, for only last time. Okay, so for the victim's benefit. <clears throat> so it says um, today's topic: initiating a bin, uh, din Torah. Din is uh, uh, judgment of Torah. The Torah requires uh, that monetary dispute adjudicated by base din, rabbinical court. It is permissible to exert social pressure on an individual to convince him to agree to participate as Ben's Din uh, 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 court case. Um, right? Okay, so let's. However, the social pressure that could cause embarrassment is not the option if the person is in category of uh, Amisecha, your fellow. A person who is erroneous and believes that he is justified in taking someone else's money must be set straight. But he is not, but, uh, he is not a mumar, rebellious sinner. Embarrassment is not a recourse, but one may uh, discuss the matter with anyone who can influence the person and explain that the person is involved in a monetary dispute and should be uh, per, uh, pursued it to come before the base din. Okay, so let's try to understand from the beginning. We explain the whole situation. And I was actually witness a few times of these uh, things. So we're going to explain. <laughs> so one more time. The Torah requires the monetary dispute adjudicated by base din, rabbinical court. So today, as we said before, we don't have uh, power to, to uh, adjudicate uh, criminal cases. Uh, most likely, of course, we have to ask uh, the permission of Beis Din, but uh, most likely they're going to go to the civil court, but uh, with the permission of Beis Din, which is uh, critical here. But monetary, monetary cases, divorces, all of these things, absolutely must go to the Beis Din. All of them must go to the Beis Din, but uh, this Beis Din can uh, decide on the, uh, on the laws of the Torah. And plus, uh, uh, just to remind us, in, uh, in, many, uh, in many cases, uh, the civil law, I think in every country that's I mean I don't, I don't know the laws in every country but I assume that at least in most of the countries they uh, they can uh, put some somebody in prison if if somebody stole or did uh, some something like monetary fraud against somebody else he can go to prison but it's not what uh, Torah mandates so meaning when uh, <clears throat> when uh, well, when somebody stole he has to return it. Uh, in some cases, uh, a person would pay double and some four times, five times, even though today we don't have fines, but at least uh, he would need to pay back. But nobody ever said in Torah that a person goes to prison. So, I mean, in the prison, it's much harsher, harsher, harsher sentence than uh, the Torah prescribes. Right? So, a Jew and is not allowed to take another Jew to base him. But if this Jew is stubborn, so you have to, uh, and he does not want to go to base him. Right, because uh, looks like he suspects that he's uh, he's going to be found guilty. Right, so we, we are allowed to put a social pressure. So continue. It is permissible to exert social pressure on the individual to convince him to agree to participate in din Torah. Right before the base din. Okay, so meaning that to to pressure him to come to base din. However, social pressure that could cause embarrassment is not the option. If the person in the category amisecha, so amisecha is so okay, so okay, we 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 allowed to put a uh, um, social pressure, but not to embarrass him, especially if he's a uh, uh, he's still a shomer shabbos and mitzvah. So if he's still observant person, and he's uh, he's wrong only in this monetary right uh, issue, he may may maybe, maybe even in one case has a dispute with somebody else, so he's still part of the nation, right? He's not rebellious against Hashem, right? So we have to be very, very careful. Um, a person who is erroneously believed that he's justified taking someone else's money must be set straight, right? So, I mean, uh, he, he thought that maybe he's allowed to keep this money. Okay, many different uh, um, scenarios. Somebody left him deposit, but then they did not deliver all of these things. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, just about the said instead, but uh, but he's not Mumar. 
So Mumara is, uh, is somebody like uh, Apicorus. He's not. He's not in this case Apicorus. So about Apicorus, we're allowed to, to, to speak uh, um, despairingly about him. We're allowed to uh, humiliate him, but, uh, but not a uh, regular Jew. Okay. Embarrassment is not a recourse, but one may discuss the matter with anyone who can influence the person to explain that the person is involved in a monetary dispute and should be uh, pursued uh, to come before the basin. So, but you're allowed to, in order to apply the, 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 the social pressure, talk to every, to his neighbors, to his rabbi, to his brother-in-law, to his uncle, to, well, to, to all of his brothers, maybe, to, to his family, in order to help to apply the, the pressure on him. Okay, so this is justified. Unlike the individual, um, a base dean may publicize the fact that the individual uh, refuses to abide by its ruling or uh, ignore the summons uh, to appeal uh, appear before it. And we actually learned this in uh, um, Hilcha Hil Talmud Torah, um, in, in the very end of that, uh, um, that section. So it was actually discussing the laws of Nido, I think it's in Tal Talmudor. The laws of Nido, and uh, this uh, this uh, this was one of the twenty-four categories of the person who is uh, he's put on Nido, meaning uh, excommunication by the whole community, right? Uh, the, the person uh, who refuses to come the, to the, the base din, right? It's one category. Another category, one who is embarrassing uh, the agent of the base din, somebody like uh, would come to deliver him mail to invitation, but he would embarrass him, like uh, right? So it's. Uh, um, so it's serious, serious um, offense. As previously mentioned, social pressure is often the, uh, often the only means by which the rabbinical court uh, can enforce his decision, their decision. So of course, I mean, uh, you, you, uh, a person lives in a community. So and uh, and many people uh, like the, today, of course, the people like uh, secular people they brazen, and they would not care about the social pressure. Some of them, some of them would. But if you live in a close community. You know, felt this social pressure very much. So especially you have kids, and uh, guess what? Everybody is uh, it's announcing. You know, nobody's going to marry your kids. And guess what? Maybe your brother kids, maybe sister kids. Oh, oh, one one second. You you eat eat sick, uh, and your uncle is this and that who refuses to come to court. Okay, I'm sorry. Hang up. You understand? So it's very big pressure and uh, to turn on him and on on the whole family. Okay, so I stop here. Thank you.